Calculus! This is AP Calculus Lesson 7-3. We are talking about direction today. Let's talk about velocity. I, in my example, have Mr. Frog, who's super cool. He is going to, or, yeah, it's definitely he, not misses. He is going to be moving at four feet per second. And from, and T is going to represent time here. I'm just going to say seconds because that matches with our units up here. And from zero to four seconds, you have a constant velocity. He has a constant velocity of four feet per second. So let's analyze what we can get from that information. That will be something that will be provided to you on the AP test or in the real world. You'll see, okay, four feet per second. This means there's this invisible plus because it's positive. That means you're going to the which direction? And I'm assuming Mr. Frog does not have wings, so he's not going to be going up. Therefore, we assume positive direction is forward. That works, but if you're talking about something that you can actually see in the two-dimensional plane where you have up, down, left, and right, kind of like the coordinate plane, you would be going... Side to side. Yeah, side to side, but you have to choose one direction or the other. All right. right, yeah. And that is how we always interpret positive. Positive means right. So this, this positive sign right here, that means you're going to the right. And then you have four feet per, per second. So this four feet per second, that is going to be your speed. And then, of course, you have your, your domain. Um, it's not super important, but we can just say that's our domain. So that is a velocity problem. There are two things that we really need when we're talking about velocity. Do you guys remember them? Are You, you guys are taking chemistry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so physics is going to be next year. Next year, you'll have this answer when Mr. Brown asks you, what is velocity made out of? What are the two components for velocity? You might already know them right now. What do you think they are? They're right there, right and speed. What are those things? What categories can I put them in? Units. Close S units. Speed and direction. Speed and direction, there it is. So speed and direction are the technical categories when you're in physics, but in math, well, let's write down the physics. So speed and direction. Um, oops, went back too far. Speed and direction. Speed and direction. In math, we get those and we tr uh, turn them into a quantity. And the, f the real word that I use over and over again is magnitude. And I think this is a physics word too. Usually you say speed in physics, but magnitude is the very professional term, magnitude. And instead of saying direction, I'm just going to call it, in math, we technically call it the modulus, or no, we say the, the argument. This is the modulus. This would be the argument, but in calculus, we're just going to call this the sign. Is it positive or is it negative? That's all we really need. So sign that's going to be either positive or negative. All right, so let's talk about Mr. Frog's second journey. His first journey, he's going four feet per second. His second journey is given by this graph. Let's analyze what's happening on this graph. And again, this is the graph of velocity. I say that right here. So. Let me just choose a random point here, um, right here. What's happening? What do you know to be true about Mr. Frog's speed? Constant. It is constant, yes. This is a constant speed right here. It's an acceleration of zero. Yes, that's a good way of saying it too. And we can use a different color. This is acceleration is zero. We'll write that down because Ben said acceleration is zero. That is really important. Eventually, we'll be talking about that more in depth uh, at a later date. Um, let's choose another point. What about right here? Yoink. The so the speed is decreasing. I agree. And most importantly, let's talk about your... Um, so your, your speed is decreasing. That is true because your acceleration is negative. But what about... Um, which of these four things could you say is happening at this point? If it was, instead of Mr. Frog, it was a particle, would this Mr. Frog be at rest? Would he be moving right, left, down? Would he be changing directions? What's happening right here? Um, yeah. I mean, no, very okay. What's happening right at this point? And it's, yeah, it is a hard idea. Doesn't that mean at rest? It does. Yes. The velocity is zero. The velocity is a height. The height here is zero. This is at rest. 
and we put that in quotes because at rest, in quotes, instantaneously. If I could divide time into an infinite number of times within a second, that's still uncountably infinite. Um, whatever, we're not going to get into types of infinity, but at rest at an instant. Um, basically, you're never at rest, but at that infinite decimal point, you are at rest. Right at time equals three. Not at 3.0001, not at 2.99999, but at exactly at three, you are at rest. Exactly. Um, what's happening for this giant area? Let's do green up here. This area right here. What could you say about that giant area? That giant area, what is happening? Am I moving right or am I moving left? Or up or down? I don't know if I'm talking about a plane going up or whatever. Is that a positive direction or is that a negative direction? Yeah, that's the positive direction. So this is going to be moving right or up. And then this area down here, all of that time down here, that's moving where? Down, down or left. left. Yep, left or down. Perfect. So we know how to analyze a graph. Let's go ahead and do formal definitions. I gave these stars because they are formal definitions. Particle is at rest. You guys want to take a guess? All of these have to deal with velocity. V, not acceleration. So velocity is in the definition of each and every one of these. So velocity. What's happening with velocity at rest? Velocity is positive, negative, zero, one of those two, one of those three. It's zero, yes. Velocity equals zero. What about velocity here? for moving right or up. So is velocity just the graph? It's just the graph, yeah, the, the height of the graph. Okay. Velocity, velocity. velocity is greater than zero? Yep, it's, it's positive. Velocity is positive up here, so it's moving right or up. Uh, moving left or down, that's going to be velocity is less than zero, yep. What about direction change? We didn't analyze that on our graph, but it does happen somewhere on here with Mr. Frog's second journey. Can anyone either define the definition or maybe find where it happens on this graph? Where does he change position? Does he change position right there? Maybe right there? I don't know. Right there? Right there? Velocity sign change. Right? It is a velocity sign change. V sign change. So where's our V sign change with Mr. Frog's second journey? T equals three. Yep, there it is. So at that point right there, that is change directions. I was going right, now I'm going left. I was going up, now I'm going down. I've changed direction at this time three because I've gone from a positive to a negative height on the graph of velocity. So far so good? All right. So, um, do you guys have calculators with you? TI-83, did you hand them back? Oh, I have them. Uh, I never took it. So. Never took it? So, I Arrow, I have yours in. I might have one in my desk. Would you be interrupting class if you went back and grabbed it right now? Oh, no one. That's it. What class is it? All right, so, let's go ahead and graph function. The way that you do that is you go to your Y equals button in the top left. Thank you, Ben. And then you should see this, this screen right here. Let's go ahead and just graph a function. Let's do 3x squared. So if I want to graph 3x squared, I hit 3. The x is the uh, this link button, x, t, theta, n. So I have 3x and then squared. I can do the squared button, or I can say to the power of 7 or something like that, power of 2. And I'll go 3x squared minus 3. Yeah, mine's different. It doesn't. It doesn't show like y1, y2, it shows x1, t. Ah, okay, so go to mode and go down here to function and select that one and hit enter. And then go back to your y equals and it should be back, yeah? Oh, yeah. All right. Three x squared minus three, everyone has that. And then go ahead to the top right where it says graph. Oh, wait, hold on. Before you hit graph, go to your window. You need to set the window size. Your window size, let's graph it between negative 4 and 4. So uh, the negative and minus sign are totally different. You have to do a negative right here. So negative 4, and you hit enter, come down here to x max, let's do 4. 
the Y, you don't have to do. The Y min and Y max, you can automatically scale it by your X coordinates, by your domain, and it will automatically scale. If I go to zoom, and I, you can hit zero, or you can scroll all the way to the bottom where it says zoom fit, I'm just going to hit zero. It's a faster way of getting there. And then it will automatically graph it and scale it accordingly. I have just graphed the equation y equals x squared minus, or x, yeah, x squared minus, 3x squared minus 3, I don't know what I graphed, but there it is. 3x squared minus 3, and I can always come back to that by hitting graph. Does everyone see that? Yeah. Let's write down those steps just in case you need them. Aw, everything is going smooth. He's a very happy baby. Um, so, what were our steps? Yes, so we needed to first enter an equation. Enter equation. And the way that we did that was the button was the y equals button. And I do a little box around that for a button. And then the next thing that we did was enter an interval. Between where and where? And we did that by going to window. And it doesn't matter what your window is. We did it from negative 4 to 4 because I just randomly chose that. And then next, we did uh, zoom 0. Zoom, and then the number 0. Zoom 0, and that would automatically graph it. All right. For your homework, you're going to be finding zeros. So let's learn how to do that. Let's find the zeros of our function that we just graphed. We graphed this x, 3x squared minus 3. How do I find where it touches this x-intercept? What is this point exactly? What is this point exactly? So the way that you do that is we need to trace. Actually, we're going to calculate it. Um, you could trace it and just kind of uh, eyeball it and hit left, 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 left until you get a y-coordinate of exactly 0. But you'll notice that I can't get exactly 0. I get to 0 0.12, and then it goes to negative 0.37. So by tracing it, you can see this little cursor move up and down, left and right, stuff like that. It traces the function. But we want to just calculate it. The way that we do that is we do second trace. So second trace, and it goes to calculate, because calculate is the yellow above it, of course. We want to calculate the zero. So instead of, you could scroll down and hit enter on two, or I could just hit two right now. Boom. When I hit two, it says, I need to enter a left boundary. It says left boundary question mark in the bottom left. Do we see that? So the left boundary of the zero. So you need to choose the left boundary of this zero. You can't see the zero on my calculator because it's down here. Um, that is a good left boundary. I can just hit enter. The right boundary, now I need to hit right a bunch of times until I'm to the right of the x coordinate. OK, my zero was right about here. My zero was right about here. Now I'm far enough to the right boundary, and I can hit enter. And it says, take a guess between where and where. And I'm going to say, guess right about there. Guessing right about there. And it will calculate, calculate. And it says, hey, the 0 is exactly negative 1, comma 0. Did everyone get that? All right. So let's write down those steps. Eventually, it's going to get harder with harder functions. We did an easy function. So we did second trace. So second. Then we did trace trace, and then we hit 2. From there, you choose your, your boundaries. So I guess the easiest way of doing that is if you just start on the, where the 0 is. Start on x-intercept. Then the next step is to basically do the following. You hit the left arrow key, left arrow key, left arrow key, and then you hit Enter. Then you do right arrow key, right arrow key, right arrow key. That will get you back to the estimate. Then three more. Right arrow key, right arrow key, right arrow key. Hit enter. And then you go back to your original estimation. And then you hit enter. This is the long way of doing it. And it's the easiest way to remember. I'm going to show you a shortcut right now. All right. So what's one that's a calculator? Here's a calculator one. Particle moves along this axis given by this function. Go ahead and graph 
this function right here, natural log of t squared minus 3. This is a calculator problem. I, can, I should have written that on the side, but this is the second problem. That's a calculator problem. Whenever you have some random function, that's going to be a calculator problem. Um, so this one is also a calculator problem right here on the back. Go ahead and graph this one on our calculators. Just use an x. Yeah, x squared minus 3x plus 3. And then window, it tells us what our window is right here. Our window is between 0 and 5. So 0, enter, 5, enter, zoom, 0. Let's see if we all get the same graph. Ah, this one looks way nicer. Thank you, John. That's a cool function. Okay, we need to find what those zeros are exactly, and I can tell that they're going to be integers. It's probably just going to be 1 and 2, but let's make sure it's 1 and 2. Maybe it's 1.015. I don't know. So what are my steps for finding the, the zeros? Second trace 2. Second trace 2. And so here's your shortcut, the fine thing I was finally trying to teach you. Instead of going left, 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 just choose a left boundary by entering in a number. A left boundary, a good left boundary is zero. I hit zero, and that's my left boundary. My right boundary, well, that's the coordinate one, so let's do 1.5. 1.5. And any number in between zero and 1.5 will work. One, that's my guess. And it calculates it's exactly one. A little bit faster, yeah? Let's try the second one. Second trace, two. My left boundary is now going to be 1.5. My right boundary, I'm going to say, I don't know, 5. It doesn't really matter. And any number in between there, 4. And it gives me x equals 2. It was an exact number 1 and 2. So the answer for a, at what time is the particle at rest? It's at t equals 1 and t equals 2. And your reason, you have to have your reason, it's because velocity equals 0. All right. Any questions? All right. That concludes the lesson.